Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Well, today I'm going to show you how I have my talkback mic set up. Kind of avoid the pain in the butt situation where uh, you have musicians you want to talk to in another room that you're, you know, recording with. But you don't want to have the sound of your speakers going into that microphone and going out to their headphones. I'm going to show you how to rig it up today in two different ways with a hardware compressor and with a software compressor. And I also have a cheat sheet for you that you can download to make sure that you don't forget how to set this up when the time comes. Okay, so I've been meaning to do this for a while now. I mean, I've been using this thing, it's just a Behringer dynamic mic with a switch on it. But a lot of times I'd forget to even turn the mic on, and then start waving to me like, hey, your mic's not on. So it kind of becomes an issue. Um, this has been a great system for me so far, and really my motivation was to set this up for video stuff. I mean, every time I hit the space bar, I have to edit that. So it's really not complicated. I'll walk you through the steps today, and you can also reference my cheat sheet. Now, if that's something that you're interested in, I'm going to be providing my cheat sheet to anybody on my emailing list, and also the tone track, which is essential for this technique today. You can find links for that in the upper right of the screen and you can download that immediately. Again, it's free. It's a cheat sheet and the tone track to set up this technique for your own studio. So the key to this technique is using a side chain of a compressor. Now, what's cool about this is that you can tell the compressor to only react to what you want it to react to. So instead of compressing the sound of my voice going through my talkback mic, I can have it compress to the sound of something else. It'll actually turn down the volume of my talkback. So you could think, well, okay, so I'll take whatever's coming out of my monitors, make a copy, and send it to that compressor. And therefore, whenever something is coming out of my monitors, the mic turns off, it gets compressed. However, it's just not consistent enough, you know? It could be a soft passage of acoustic, acoustic guitar, or it could be, you know, whatever. Whatever the reason is, you wanna make sure that if the space bar gets hit, the mic goes off. And for this, I set up a tone track. I believe it's like an 80 hertz or 100 hertz tone. And after I created a file that's about eight to 10 minutes long, I went ahead and dropped it into my DAW on a separate track. Now this track doesn't have to necessarily have an output if you're using software to do this. But for me, using hardware, I have to specify a dedicated output to send this tone out to my compressor. So in this case, it's output 15. So I'll set that up right now. And there we go. The tone is going into the side chain and it's reacting to the sound of the tone and it's turning off the mic. It's really pretty easy. Now the compression settings are infinity to one at the lowest threshold possible. So it's absolutely getting slammed. And I actually have it daisy chained, so one channel into the other here. It's really clamping down on the mic and really turning it off very, very quickly. Using software, it's also very easy to do, as long as you have a way of side chaining a compressor in your DAW. So here is Studio One. I have a compressor that, uh, right here at the top, I can specify what it's listening to, to detect when it will compress. And what I have is basically uh, the input of this track is going to need to be your talkback mic, and the output will need to be an output you can route to the musician headphones. You're basically using your DAW and the monitor uh, enable button to send a signal through it and route the signal and send it back out again. So here we have a compressor. It's active. It's being side chained to the tone track. Let's see if it works. Yeah, there we go. So that's how to set it up using software. So hardware, software. I just kind of like the hardware because I can visually see it and it's one less thing going on in the DAW. Um, I try to minimize stuff that's going on there, stuff that's hidden and all that. Um, but again, you could set this up with a template. It's really not hard to do. And this can be something that's just a hidden track that you really don't even know that's you know, working in the background. So again, it's key to use a tone for this because whatever is coming out of your monitors may not be consistent enough. Now, another thing you could do is have a microphone in your live room and a lot of times they have an issue of talking back to me. So you could actually use one channel for the control room talkback, another channel 
for the musician talk back. You could have it, you know, both sending this tone track and it's cutting off every time um, you hit the space bar. Now, of course, if they're just going to, you know, noodle around on whatever they're doing and you're not actually playing from the DAW, then you're going to be hearing that talk back in your monitors and it'll be a little loud. However, if you have a situation where you have a dynamic mic set up, they're able to talk right into the mic and you're able to minimize how loud that talk back is in your monitoring situation. A lot of times I'll have that kind of panned off to the side and it'll be just loud enough for me to hear them. In that case, it's actually probably not a big deal. If they're going to be noodling around or whatever, sure, I'll hear it coming through. Um, but it's not going to disrupt anything that I need to do um, as they're setting up their tone and as I'm working. Of course, both mics will be cut off when they're actually laying tracks, but if somebody's playing their instrument and you're not playing your DAW, it's going to be an active mic. A quick note about this DBX 166 is that I didn't want to use two tracks of my output and I probably should have used maybe a Y cable to send uh, the tone track to both compressors, but I didn't happen to have that. I experimented with using the master um, and the stereo couple so that channel 2 follows whatever channel 1's doing. And I actually have it daisy chained, so it goes into channel 1 and then into channel 2 and then out. However, there's actually some normal way going on. Uh, and the detector input of channel 2, it's a normal input so that if there's nothing in that jack, it actually doesn't work. So even if you just take a stereo plug and just occupy that jack, it didn't, the cable didn't have to go anywhere. But just stick something in the jack and that'll ensure that the detector input is actually working and both channels are joined together via the stereo couple. So, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. If you have any rigs of your own studio that you have uh, to solve this issue, I'd love to hear it. Again, check out that free PDF cheat sheet on how to set this up. Uh, it's helpful just so that you don't have to rewatch this video. And also, it includes the tone track that you could drop in and save to your templates and your DOM. So, we'll be hanging out in the comments below.